Good evening, everyone. Hello, especially to my wise men out there. Wise men, raise your hands. All right, good. And all their invited guests, thanks for coming. I'm Dewey LaSalle, I'm president of the Wise Men this year, and we're very pleased to be cooperating in conjunction with the library on really great speakers and great events, and this is certainly one of them. Uh, I have a personal um, kind of a connection with this one. I used to work for the Newport Folk and Jazz Festivals back in the day, and uh, was uh, helped out on a lot of those types of uh, musical events, and, and it was a lot of fun. So the, we're gonna hear from Howard Saffron tonight. He's gonna talk about the great things he's been doing over in Bridgeport. And I just wanna make a pitch for the wise men. If any of you guys out there aren't a member of the wise men, well, you should be. We're the largest uh, tired, retired and uh, semi-retired uh, men's group in, in Fairfield County. We got 400 guys and there isn't anything that we don't do. If you're into, if you're, if you're into sports, I mean, we've got golfing, we've got tennis, we've got pickleball, we've got ping pong, we've got bocce. And if you're into intellectual stuff, well, we've got three different book clubs, sci-fi books, nonfiction books, fiction books, and uh, somebody now wants to start a military war books, which is great. We've got, we got bridge, we've got... I mean, we have an international discussion group with these, we get like 40, 50 guys a week to get together and argue about what's going on in the world. I don't know if they know anything, but they do get on and, <laughs> they do get on and argue a lot about it. And uh, so we also do lots of trips and events and dinners and parties and uh, socializing. And it's, it's, just, it's just a great, great group. This week, coming up in two weeks, we got a clam bake, then we're gonna do a, a, a cruise out on this in Stanford Harbor with, on an 80 foot uh, uh, boat, and it, it's, that's just super. So anyway, if you wanna know anything about, more about the Wiseman, stop over at our booth over here with, next to the wine, and uh, have a glass and pick up a card, and uh, uh, give us, give us a, a possibility of joining. I'm gonna introduce now um, Dick Colt, who's gonna introduce our featured speaker for tonight. Dick. Thank you very much and thank you uh, for coming this evening. I think you're gonna have a really, really enjoyable time hearing this story. Um, and uh, it's my pleasure to introduce a, an old friend, Howard Safan, who uh, I've known for a number of years and I know many of you here know Howard. And, uh, 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 we're going to hear the story about the Hartford Healthcare Amphitheater in Bridgeport, which is a, it's not just your average amphitheater story, I have to tell you. And uh, I think you'll find it very interesting and very entertaining. Uh, the AMP has hosted a, a, a list of acts from the Foo Fighters to Sting, uh, to her, to James Taylor, and much more. In fact, just the other night they had uh, Santana. Uh, it was a, a great show. Um, and it's fulfilling a promise to Bridgeport as the entertainment destination of the region. And that's what's really key here, uh, to draw this kind of talent to the region. And this is what Hartford, uh, this is what Howard is doing. Uh, season three is already the best yet with over 40 shows and genres from hip hop to alternative to Latin to classic rock shows and jam, jam bands. And it's proven to be uh, a premier music venue here. And um, this year's highlights include Rod Stewart, uh, Tedeschi Trucks, uh, Earth, Wind and Fire, Darius Rucker, James Taylor, and, and many more. Uh, Howard also owns and operates the Sports Center of Connecticut uh, up in Shelton, uh, which has, uh, you've uh, had that, and that's been around for quite some time, done very, very well, and a great destination for companies to entertain and have meetings and such. Uh, He's a former president of the Bridgeport Sound Tigers, which is his connection to the baseball stadium. And um, he oversaw the management of the New York Islanders Hockey Club, as well as Nassau Coliseum. Uh, and uh, president of uh, the Webster Bank Arena uh, in, in uh, Bridgeport, uh, and have pioneered the renovation of uh, that particular venue. He's also the owner of Bishop Development, developers of high-end residential homes and commercial properties, and owns and manages over 250,000 square feet of commercial space in Connecticut. 
Uh, he, he, he received his JD from Brooklyn Law and BS in Finance from Syracuse, and he, he lives here in Weston with his wife and uh, four children, so he's a local. And uh, I would like to uh, 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 draw your attention to the screen now because we're going to open this program with a great video which is gonna really get you into what this is all about, and then Howard will be joining us. When you're my age and you're still good at something, that's fun. To say this area loves its concerts is a massive understatement. And when the Coliseum closed, we had no place to go. This is probably the biggest thing to happen to the Connecticut concert scene in forever. We're doing this for our personal pride. You know, that when we leave this earth, this is our legacy. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the city of Bridgeport. We want to make sure that people love coming here and that they appreciate coming to the city of Bridgeport. I mean, this is it. Where else can you go? You can be in and out and see top talent. I wasn't smart enough to go to law school and also run this business. So I said, okay, which am I gonna choose? I was 22 years old. Well, that wasn't a hard choice to make. <laughs> Howard started to run the Webster Bank Arena in Bridgeport, and Howard kept taking me out to lunch, which is a good way to get my attention. We'd go to this great Italian restaurant in Wallingford called Michael's. One day we were having lunch, and Jimmy said to me, the real secret to this market is a 6,000 seat boutique amphitheater. So my office used to overlook uh, the ball field, um, and this was where the bluefish played. I had been to many games there. The reason your kids or anybody really wanted to go see the bluefish was that you were right in it. You felt like you were right in it. So I called him back the next day and I said, are you really interested in doing something in Bridgeport? He said, yeah. But then I said, I have an idea. And that idea was what, where we are today. The style is industrial because it's perfect for Bridgeport, yet we kept the nuances of a baseball stadium. No, this is the way concert venues are gonna look in the future with the idea of concert goers in mind. We wrapped the dugouts in granite. We kept the lower level and then added the bathrooms and added the VIP lounges. So the footprint stayed very much the same. I think there's luxury items in there that uh, haven't even been invented yet. <laughs> Driving by a 995, you can see it not only coming out of the ground, but now projecting up into the sky. So the roof is iconic. Nick's been doing it for almost 50 years, and he really has created a very unique roof that consists of six flying masts, as well as a torch in the middle that uh, goes up over 125 feet. And people ask all the time, well, where is the stage? Well, the stage is basically about second base. The last row seat is an awesome seat at almost any other venue. So not only will you have incredible video boards flanking the stage, you're gonna be able to look at the stage and be closer than you will to almost any other concert venue. You've got to come here to experience this. There is not a bad seat in the house. This is an experience you will never forget. The barn's the backstage area. It houses the dressing rooms. Probably the nicest backstage area that I've ever seen. And that's important to artists who are on the road. When we went through the process of planning with Live Nation, our goal was to make sure that the entertainers would be happy. And when they find a place that's extraordinarily comfortable backstage, they like it a lot. When they like it a lot, they have to come back next year, and that's just what we want. So we built a 25,000 square feet barn that consists of six customized dressing rooms with bathrooms and showers and marble countertops. Then we have this magnificent over 4,000 square foot eating area. And then we have the headliner suite, where we have a custom kitchen with a chef and a dining room, and then a living room with a huge TV and a fireplace, two bathrooms, a massage room, and a bedroom. So our accommodations, we think, will be up there with the, the nicest facilities throughout the country. You're gonna see people going early. You're gonna see people staying late because it's bigger than who's playing. I wanna just go and eat. There's the barbecue there and there's mm. local uh, breweries there. Like as soon as Howard said he was doing this, I'm on the phone going, hey dude, uh, I wanna be involved. Next thing you know, we're doing a tap room. Our tap room, it enables people to show up early, get into the mood, enjoy a few beers, have a little bit of food before the event starts and you're out on the main floor and you can get right into the act. Live Nation is the largest uh, live entertainment company in the world. I think we're known for quality. I've been through a lot of people, and I think this team I have right now is the best I've ever had. Howard, this place is the best. I love this amphitheater. It's incredible right here in Bridgeport. 
it's going to be quite a place to not just, as I say, just drive by and see, but to be part of for um, entertainment music. And this is going to be the best concert experience in the world. Let's hear you roar! This will change the whole nature of Fairfield County, as far as entertainment is concerned. And the experience of coming to a, a concert at Hartford Healthcare Amphitheater is going to be completely different than any other concert experience you've ever encountered. Please welcome our guest speaker for the evening, Howard Safan. Thank you, Dick. Has anybody ever said to you, you're absolutely out of your mind when you had an idea? Well, guess what? That's exactly what happened when I decided to build an amphitheater in Bridgeport. The first question was, why in God's name would you ever build it in Bridgeport? And that's, and that's a th common theme. And I hear it literally every week, except now the tables are turned. We're in our year three and people are saying, oh my God, it's so easy to get here. It's, it's only 10 minutes from Fairfield. It's only 15 minutes from Westport. And the genesis of this is exactly what the video is about. Uh, it was a lunch with Jimmy Coplick and I. I was running the uh, Webster Bank Arena. I was partners with Charles Wong. And it was, it was a fortuitous situation where Live Nation was managing the Ives in Danbury. And Jimmy really said, you know, we want, Live Nation wants to build an amphitheater, but there's nowhere to build it. And sure enough, you know, the next day, I said to Jimmy, I called him up and I said, are you ready to do it? He said, where? I said, in Bridgeport. And he could not believe that I was talking about the baseball stadium. So it's interesting because we go from there to meeting with, uh, at the time, Mayor Finch, who is an absolutely avid Bluefish fan. And Mayor Finch said, uh, we can't give up fish. I said, well, they're dead already. You just don't know it. So, uh, so, so here, was, here was the tricking point. Mayor Finch lost the election. So what do you do? My advocate, the, the man who, who supported me at the Webster Bank Arena, all of a sudden was gone. And the new mayor was a guy named Joe Gannam, who I didn't know from Adam. So I basically had shelved the plan of building an amphitheater until one day, one of my attorneys, and by the way, another one of my attorneys is out here, Roger Leifer, wherever you are, uh, there we are. Um, Bob Bertram said, I know, I know Joe Gannam well. Are you really going to do the amphitheater? I said, well, I don't know him at all. And he introduced me to Joe Gannam, and the rest is history. Joe Gannam it was a huge supporter of the amphitheater, and he believed that that would turn around the area, as did we. So we made the presentation to the Bridgeport uh, City Council and that was based on a budget of $18 million. And we asked the city to participate for $7.5 million. And the city was kind enough to do that, except there was one problem. When we took possession of the stadium, we realized suddenly that it wasn't what it seemed to be. The sprinkler system was completely clogged, didn't work, that was a million dollars. The elevators didn't work, that was another $2 million. The seats completely needed to be replaced. So to make a long story short, we, uh, we went back to the city and we said, look, this project now is gonna be $24 million. And $24 million, we need another $4.5 million from the city. And I'll never forget this because this was during COVID. And we were, my family and I were up in, uh, up in Vermont, and it was, uh, it was, it was Passover. And uh, we were having our Seder, and I had to go argue for the four and a half million dollars, and, and it was unbelievable, the fight that I had to go through the city. But finally, we were, we were successful, and now this $24 million project, because everybody asked this question, how much does this, did this facility cost, became $50 million. <laughs> So uh, it just goes to show you how good of a businessman I am because I can't budget and, uh, and, I, and I can't say no. So, but what makes, the, what makes the amphitheater unique is that it's local and it's genuine. And as I was just saying this the other day, um, you could have all the talent in the world, but without the experience, you won't have the success. 
So people will come to see Rod Stewart, but if they don't feel comfortable, then they're not gonna, they're not gonna enjoy themselves. So therefore, I grew up on Long Island, and in Long Island, there was, there was one amphitheater, and that's Jones Beach. So, however, there's a problem at high tide at Jones Beach. If, so some people know this. So if you're in the first five rows, the water is literally up to your knee. If it rains, forget about it. There's no cover whatsoever. And in today's world, it's not like tickets are cheap, if any of you have ever tried to go to Taylor Swift. So, so the, the reality was in Fairfield County, people will not accept a venue at, that they can't feel comfortable. Ergo, we have this, this iconic roof that if you go by 95, you see this tensile membrane fabric roof. And this was designed by a gentleman by the name of Nick Goldsmith. And Nick Goldsmith is um, one of two architects known worldwide for, de for his design in tensile fabric. So when we sat down first with Nick and his team, Nick said, what do you want this to look like? And I said, we're the home of Barnum. And I want this to look like a circus tent. And, uh, and that started the design. And the design is 60,000 square feet of tensile fabric roof. It goes up 125 feet in the air. And then it's, it covers over 92% of the venue. And it's over a million pounds of steel. So it's really a, quite an incredible achievement. And we've visited about once a month from people who want to build this. And then when we tell them the price, they no longer want to build it. So it's, uh, it's, it's really neat. But what this does is it gives us the ability, rain or shine, to have an outdoor venue. And uh, everybody asks, well, what was the effect of COVID? And the effect of COVID is it really slowed up our construction. So all of our subcontractors had to be separated. But COVID did one other thing it made people realize how awesome it was to be outside. And lots of people don't want to be inside. So now we're in our third year and we're going to, we're going to host 47 concerts this year of which over a third of them will be sold out. And uh, Chaz from Chaz and AJ said to me, he asked the question, he said, what did people in Fairfield County do before the amphitheater got there? And the answer is it was just an underserved market. And now people come five times, eight times, 12 times a year, just for the experience. And what makes the amphitheater different in terms of an experience on the front end for the clients, for you people, it's the local food. So my wife and I are foodies, and it's very, very important that when you go to a venue, you're not getting chicken tenders and, and fries. She'd kill me if she ever uh, saw me eat that crap. The, uh, so instead, you're going, you're going to get tasty yolk and you're going to get donut crazy. If anybody grew up in Westchester, you're going to get Walter's hot dogs and you're going to get fresh pizza and sushi, you name it. But that's, that's what the place is all about. And it's the leading venue for craft beers. So as you could see by Brad's commentary in Two Roads, Two Roads has a tap room. It's, uh, we have a beer called Fiddlehead, which is our number one beer, and they're, they're out of Shelburne, Vermont. And people sit there and they cannot believe what they're getting at this amphitheater. And now you add to that Live Nation. So I've been developing for, for how long, Raj? <laughs> yeah, for, uh, for a long time. Yeah, a long time. So I've been, I've been developing for 25 years, but to be honest with you, if I built this amphitheater without Live Nation, it would be a beautiful facility, but it wouldn't be used. And the magic is the Coplicks. So Jim and Jeremy Coplick are, are the secret to the sauce. They bring the Rod Stewart's of the world. They bring the Noah Kahn's of the world. They bring the uh, Kevin Hart's of the world. So we have this incredible diversity talent that you sit there and you say, oh my God, I can't believe this is in our local backyard. I mean, think about it. Rod Stewart and James Taylor that are, that are 12 to 15 minutes away. Unheard of. So normally those are at Madison Square Garden, right? And you're paying a fortune, but not here. And that's, and that's part of it. But it's also important for the artist so as you can see in the video, we have six dressing rooms and then we have a star suite. We have a 3,000 seat dining room. And what happens is we enable them to have a wonderful experience. 
they get off their buses, they come on to uh, our property, and then we treat them, whether it's by chefs, the dining room, whatever they want to eat. It's, it's really amazing. And um, Carlos Santana Monday night came out and he said, oh my God, this place is beautiful. And there's no higher compliment than we can have that. Tomorrow, uh, Friday night, yeah, tomorrow night, we have Darius Rucker. And last year we had Darius Rucker. And at the end of the concert, he comes up to me and he said, it would be my honor to play here next year. So literally the next day, Darius's agent canceled the concert that was scheduled at Mohegan Sun and he's playing at our facility tomorrow night. It's, uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. We, uh, we're, we're also very, very fortunate that having artists like up and coming artists like Billy Strings and Tedeschi Trucks where they want to come back and they want to be part of Bridgeport, Connecticut. It's, it's truly amazing because if you think about it, you go to TD Bank in, uh, in Boston and then you go to MSG or UBS. People don't, artists don't sit there and say, I want to play Connecticut. So, so the amphitheater really is, is our, our ability to bring live music to Connecticut, to local, to Fairfield County. And when you get to see what's happened over the past three years of how popular it's become, it's really very, very, you know, very, very heartwhelming, overwhelming, I should say. And, uh, and so that transitioned us to, to uh, what we call our Sound on Sound Festival. And our Sound on Sound Festival um, that we brought to Seaside Park in Bridgeport um, brought in over 60,000 people last, last year. And our, our headliners um, were just absolutely amazing. And this year, our headliners are Red Hot Chili Peppers and uh, John Mayer, local boy, uh, comes back home, and uh, Alanis Marset. So the ability to partner up with Live Nation and the governor, Governor's Ball guys uh, to bring the festival, again, just adds one more element of music to our community that we haven't, that we haven't uh, taken care of. And we can foresee that there's more growth coming, uh, hopefully within the next 30 to 45 days, we'll make an announcement on how we can bring even more music to, uh, to the area. So before I speak and answer more questions, I think we have a little clip on a video and then we can do some Q&A. Who knew a fucking baseball field could be so much fun? All right. Let's fucking, let me tell you something. This is a nice place to play. This is a nice place to play. I suggest that every time a band comes here, you go see them play, because this is a nice place to play. So that was uh, my friend Dave Grohl. And uh, for those of you who don't know Dave Grohl, um, I need to admit, I didn't know who Dave Grohl was either. So uh, I am not a music guy, uh, admittedly. I'm a sports guy, having run sports teams for over a decade. Uh, but Dave Grohl is part of the Foo Fighters. And uh, just, just a quick note, uh, Jeremy Koplick was able to get the Foo Fighters at our building uh, in year one. And to have an iconic band like the Foo Fighters put us on the map. And uh, it just made all the difference in the world. And from the Foo Fighters, we got to Sting, to James Taylor, et cetera, and, uh, and the rest is history. So, uh, so I, I owe a, a, a debt of gratitude to uh, Dave Grohl. And uh, when we have him next, I'll let him know that. So uh, questions uh, anybody may have? You know, the challenge of uh, asking a man like Howard questions is that you know he's got all the answers. If you have a question, Please come up here. And while you're coming up here, Howard, I have a question. Sure. Bridgeport, Connecticut? How did you have the chutzpah to create something <clears throat> like this? So Bridgeport is near and dear to my heart. Um, my first business was window and door business, and it was on Knowlton Street, 305 Knowlton Street in Bridgeport, the corner of Knowlton and Barnum. And um, I was blessed and good fortunate to uh, have grown that business to three factories and I sold it. And uh, this was my give back to Bridgeport. 
And uh, I never forgot Bridgeport and uh, feel that I have a debt of gratitude to it. One of the beautiful women is on her way up here. Hi, thank you for this incredible story. It's fascinating. But you short shrifted yourself and us by get, jumping from 24 million to 50 million. And I was very interested to, to, to go into your own head and experience with the money problems. I mean, everybody has them when they're developers, of course, but you had this unique vision, which wasn't probably even in anybody else's mind for a good deal of this. And yet you had to go through all of these steps. Give us more of the details of how you battled that stuff. So, you know, when you get to a point in life where you can do checkbook accounting, it, uh, it helps greatly. Um, the, the vision of the amphitheater was always in the back of my head. Um, I'd never looked at anybody else's amphitheaters. Uh, I don't believe in doing that. I believe that, you know, God gave me a gift that I can see things in a certain way. And um, for example, we took the dugouts, ripped out the roof, wrapped it in granite. And when you come to sit on the floor at the amphitheater, we have dugout bars. So you can literally be watching the concert, get a beer, get a cocktail and still enjoy it. No, nowhere else can you do that. I had a vision to the, the right and the left of the... Um, uh, the stage of graphic, graphic enhancement. So this beautiful screen that you have behind you, we, the same company that has made this screen and the same quality is to the right and to the left of the uh, amphitheater stage. We have the largest stage in uh, Connecticut. It's 100 feet wide, 75 feet deep, and 75 feet high. We also have the premier audio system, which Again, it's the same audio system as what you have here, D and B, and it just makes it sound amazing. So I do not have self-control. I admit that I do not have self-control, and the goal was just to make it the most beautiful facility that I could ever think of. We're only going to do this once. Let's do it right. I guess so. Next question. Is this an all-year-around facility? Great question. Um, we start every year uh, at the end of April, and uh, we finish up uh, with a 5K run in November, first week in November for Vicky Soto. Um, so our season is plentiful, and we do a lot of flat, what we call flat shows. So we just did a pizza fest, and we'll do a um, college fairs, et cetera. But we basically run May, th May through Halloween. Howard, not to sound like an a, a, a elitist in music, but I'm a, I have an eclectic musical thing. But have you considered if, if there's an audience for classical music? Um, yeah, it would be great, but it just won't draw enough people. So the wonderful part about having Live Nation is that they try a tremendous amount of different eclectic talent. Uh, on Tuesday night, we had a woman by the name of Lindsay Sterling, and she was a violinist. And uh, it, it was wonderful. It was great. Um, Billy Strings is basically a guitarist, and, um, but, but uh, you know, jazz and classic just won't draw enough. Hi, Howard. <clears throat> Thank you for doing this work in Bridgeport. How has it changed, how has your work changed Bridgeport and how has it changed the local economy in Bridgeport? It's a great question. See, it comes from somebody who's smart. <laughs> the, um, it, the economic impact uh, is over $50 million a year. Uh, what it has done to Bridgeport, it has given people the ability to open their eyes to the beauty of Bridgeport. So as we talk about our Sound on Sound Festival, our Sound on Fe Sound Festival is on Long Island Sound. And people come to the south end of Bridgeport and say, oh my God, you know, this, this, this is unbelievable. I can't believe that I'm seeing this because if I'm in Westport, these houses would be... $30 million. If I'm in Fairfield, these houses would be 12 million. Why aren't they building in Bridgeport? So you see this whole 
this whole generation that's going to change in Bridgeport. We see investment right now coming in to uh, to apartments. Uh, there's there's a couple developers that literally bring banks through the amphitheater to show the growth of Bridgeport, and uh, we foresee Bridgeport for everybody who sees those smokestacks, those big smokestacks. Those are those are that's a decommissioned gas plant owned by PSE and G that's going to be torn down probably within the year, and that's 45 acres along Long Island Sound. So it's uh, it, it should be it should be something that'll be incredible in terms of development. Hi Howard, I was wondering, do you have any plans to to make this look a little bit like um, in New Jersey? They have an they have an amphitheater to have lawn seating. So the design of our amphitheater does not permit lawn seating. It's just the footprint's too small. So therefore, our floor went all to concrete. Um, we, our capacity, which is a great question, is 7,500. When you get to the, that kind of amphitheater, the capacity up at Xfinity in East Hartford is 25,000. So the, um, the movement in the, um, in the music world is to have what we have, what's called a boutique amphitheater, because there's a lot more artists coming up and going down than a 25,000 seat facility, which now you're competing with festivals and you're competing with, at, in this day and age, stadiums. So uh, the, 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 common, the common thread today is everybody wants to be in a boutique amphitheater. So I guess we're lucky. Well, the next logical question is what's next? Um, we'll see. <laughs> They'll, they'll, there'll be a press conference uh, guaranteed within 60 days. Hi, Howard. Good to see you again. Thank you for your patience and your perseverance because we all know what really went on during those years of the battles. Um, and your question about why Bridgeport, I go back a long way when I saw Jimi Hendrix at Central High School and Elton John at Sacred Heart University. So they've, they've been at the Bridgeport, but this now will keep them there and draw them every year. And thanks again for hosting the Soto race. Thank you. Um, there's a lot of pride in bringing John Mayer to our Sound on Sound Festival. Last time John Mayer was in Bridgeport, uh, I brought him to the Webster Bank Arena. And uh, John said, you know, at the time he had a girlfriend and he introduced me to his girlfriend and his girlfriend's name was Katie and I didn't even know who this girl was until she was walking down the hallway and I realized it was Katy Perry. So, uh, so bringing people to Bridgeport's really a wonderful thing and uh, you know, you, you hear it and uh, it's, it's, it's heartwarming, it's heartwarming. I'm sorry to monopolize the microphone, but nobody's cooperating. So <laughs> what, what touches me about what you've said is the intimacy of the experience and um, getting up close and personal with, with people who you revere and enjoy. Um, it's, it's a hard thing to do in a, in, a, in a big facility, but you seem to have done it. So, you know, I grew up and uh, I was a Beatles fan. And um, I love the Beatles. And to have Ringo Starr come into your facility, it's, it's royalty. So um, Ringo, we have an 85-foot hallway that goes um, from the dining room to the stage. And um, Katie Settle, who's here, who's our incredible photographer. Katie, you want to stand up, please? Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So for every concert, Katie creates the hallway and you have pictures of the artists and you, in, in different, different um, points of their life. 
and it may be an album cover, it may be something that's significant. In fact, I just saw Katie, we have Earth, Wind and Fire on uh, August 14th, but Derek Cheater is on the front end of it. So she's putting together Derek Cheater with Earth, Wind and Fire. So it's really very, very cool. So um, Ringo Starr is literally walking down the hallway and most, and most of the artists, it's, it's unbelievable. They sit there and they do this and they're videotaping it and they put it on Instagram or, you know, it's, it's just unbelievable. They'll create a reel. And Ringo Starr is looking at all of this and he's like smiling. And at the end of the night, Ringo Starr, took every single picture in the hallway. <laughs> and, and, uh, and, and fast forward to uh, fast forward to last month, James Taylor did the same thing. But James Taylor turned to me and said one thing. He said, now when I come back on August 29th, I wanna make sure I don't see one picture that's the same as you put in the hallway. So good luck, Katie. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. This is an honor and a pleasure and uh, love, love making this part of uh, Fairfield County. So thank you. Thank you very much for joining us, Howard, and telling your great story and bringing this gem to our neighborhood. You've got to see it to believe it and to hear it. Thank you, Howard.